And the clock strikes three. All right. So this last group uh, comes filing in. So um, to uh, close out the day, we have Sensing and Mapping the World in 3D. And uh, kicking us off is uh, Philippe from uh, Paintscaping, who is going to talk about uh, photorealism in the real world using SAR. So whenever you're ready, take it away, Philippe. Thank you, sir. Uh, is this a... Uh Steel pedals, you know, for the woman, their bones. Now, one month supply of Fosamax, four pillul, pills, sells for $70 US from the pharmacy. We sell four pills to you for $10 US. What, a counterfeit? No, no, no. They're true. They're from. Uh... Call it the, the merging of real and virtual worlds through a display apparatus in real time, typically. So here you've got the guy moving his hands, and you know, on, the, on the screen you've got the augmented world with the uh, virtual puppets. Uh, so display apparatus here is a large screen, but it could also be a small screen like your iPod or, of course, gla glasses. So essentially that's what AR is. SAR, on the other hand, is the same principle. It's the merging of real and virtual, but without a display apparatus. So essentially the real world becomes the screen. So here you've got the elves on the Ritz-Carlton Kapalua that are augmenting the real world. Uh, SAR is a fancy way of describing 3D projection mapping. I prefer SAR because it sounds more intelligent. But uh, actually, S uh, 3D projection mapping is a subset of SAR. SAR is really the science. So uh, this was invented by Oliver Bimber and Ramesh Rashkar, who is now at uh, the MIT Media Lab. That, was, uh, that, that book it dates from 2005. So um, about us, we're the largest, I'd like to think so, exclusive SAR company in the USA. We were based in LA. We use a lot of designers from Hollywood because they're all a lot of work. Rhythm and News went out of business. Um, digital Domain's doing OK. But there's a lot of companies that really are not doing that great in the CG world. Uh, we represented the USA at the first 3D mapping festival in North America. We are partnered with Christie, the big uh, projector, uh, projector company. We do content and hardware. And we own the domain spatialaugmentedreality.com and 3dprojectionmapping.com. Uh, we've been all over the place, either consulted or projected in many places in the world. And we've got a lot of great clients that are very forward thinking or we'd like to think so. So here's a one minute uh, demo of what we do. let's talk about the meat of the presentation, photorealism in the real world using SAR. But first, before we go there, 
let's talk about photorealism in movies, which really was the holy grail in the, in the, at SIGGRAPH in the 80s, for those old enough to remember, in the early 90s. When are we going to create images that are real, where we don't know that they're fake? That was really something for us. So for, uh, it's all about lighting, lighting, lighting. You all know that, but I'll just give you a couple slides just as a refresher, is that here you've got the real footage of two dudes looking at a wall, right? You've got the lighting on the two dudes, and then you've got the CG augmentation on the right. I, I, I call it augmentation, really. It's just CG, right? So on the right, you've got the destruction. And the reason it works is because the lighting of the real world matches the lighting of the, of the virtual world. Well, it's essentially the same. So here, you could see now that it, you could even have interaction. You could have people touching virtual characters, and it's completely seamless. And quite frankly, we don't care. We don't care if the flock of birds is, is virtual or real. It's all about the story. So really, the merging of real and virtual is seamless in the movies. But guys, here's the thing. It's all virtual. It's the movies. It's not real. <laughs> so there is no merging of real and virtual. It's the merging of virtual-ish to vir really virtual. So let's talk about really photorealism in the real world. Now, that is something quite exciting. Because all of a sudden, uh, first, the photorealism in the real world uh, is we apply the same principle, which is the ability to augment the real world seamlessly, seamlessly with CG. It's also lighting, 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 where we have to match the real world lighting with the virtual lighting. But what's wrong with that? It's very obvious. You can't do it. Because the real world lighting will wash out your virtual lighting. You can't use real world lighting. So here's a little secret. The real world lighting washes out the virtual lighting. What do you do? You fake it. You make it look like the real world lighting is real, but in reality, it's virtual lighting. That's the secret of 3D projection mapping. Here's an example of three, uh, three virtual spotlights. As you all know, uh, 3D projection mapping, we project the 3D model of the building, whether it's Revit or Maya or 3DS Max, onto the building itself, creating an invisible layer of XYZ. So now we've got these three virtual lights at the bottom. Now these, uh, this column here, guy, I'm going to go there, OK, because the camera doesn't track me. But uh, you've got the column here. This, this, uh, this shadow is a virtual shadow, but it's a real column. So people think I've got three virtual lights, especially if I put fake physical lights. Then you really make it you know, uh, like a magician. So that when you introduce your virtual element, like Marilyn, if it shares the same shadow, your virtual element will look real. Obviously not in this case. We all know that the word Marilyn is, you know, you can't have floating uh, letters in the real world. But what if the uh, virtual elements could look real? Now that's pretty cool. So here's, uh, so here's the three virtual spotlights moving. So now uh, we did this on you know, pretty generic architecture, to say the least. Don't tell the Hampton Inn. Um, so what we did is we augmented, but this time we created soft shadows. Soft shadows are a lot more effective. So here you'll see that the toys in the middle share the same shadows as the four columns that are real. And look at the, the effect. And look also on the upper left and the upper right for the train coming out. So look upper left, upper right. You see that train coming in and out? That train looks real. Even in reality, even the real, even when we were watching, it looked absolutely real. The only reason it wasn't real is because you can't have a train come out of a building. So, uh, so we asked people, uh, what did they think? And l listen to the, not the second one. The, I never expected the windows to pop out like that. That was really cool. That's just cool. They can do that on a building without 3D glasses. What did she say? She said you, you could do that on a building without 3D glasses. She thought this, these images were stereo. And I went, wow. The reason she thought they were stereo is because, you know, uh, you have two, two eyes, right? And each eye looks at a different image in the real world. That's how you create stereo in your brain. If you put your finger in front of your, you, right, right re really close to your eyes, and you blink, these two images are completely different. But if I look at the horizon, at a mountain really far, that, that image is virtually the same for the left and right eye. There is no stereo. There's no stereo. 
And that's why, so if you look at this graph, you see at the top, it's a really far image. That's why she thought it was stereo, is because the brain told her it's stereo, but it wasn't. So it's one way to create a hologram without glasses is to fake it. So um, here's another interesting thing about SAR. It emotionally happens in the real world. A film, when you're in a theater, what you're seeing is not happening in the theater. It's happening in San Francisco, in Beijing, in the living room, on the moon. It's not happening in the theater. But with SAR, it's happening in the real world. So here's a, a so it, it's, it's technically it is film, but emotionally it's a play. It's happening here and now. So here's an example of the same building of a little elf on the upper left. As the, and the elf is clearly not attempted to look real. But people reacted uh, as if it was there. So when, when the elf almost falls, listen to the reaction of the audience. <laughs> If I brought my daughters to, in a movie theater and an elf almost fell, they would never have gone, whoa. But here, adults and kids did that. Why? Because it was emotionally, the character was here and now in mapping. So it, clearly it wasn't real. But what if it was real? What, here this is the uh, Monte Carlo. We, we didn't do it, by the way. But we suggested, hey, let's have a guy jump. So on the right, you have using the uh, software called Endorphin, which is a great software for simulation of characters. Here's the guy. You can barely see it on the upper right, but look, look closely. He's jumping. And it looks absolutely real. Now imagine if you saw a guy on a ledge that looks real and he jumped. Of course, he would be saved by Spider-Man. But the first two seconds would be pretty like, whoa, very powerful stuff. Uh, here you have, um, this is something that's currently running uh, in Scottsdale at the Western Kirlin. Look at the cannon. It's a, a special on uh, patriotism. It's, it's for Memorial Day. So look at the cannons coming out. They look absolutely real. The cannons are real, uh, are fake. The urns are real under the cannons. At least because the shadows match. Even if you were there, you would think the cannons were real. It's that powerful. Now, there, this is 11 stories high. You're not seeing the top projector. Why don't you guys go and see it? It's really cool. Till July 5th, every night. Wow, one minute left. So I have to go fast. So I, I, we covered windows with white, and people thought they were real windows until they saw this. Look at the rest on the website. This is the new fire we've done. Uh, the fire emits light, so now it looks absolutely real. So the fire emits light on the 3D model in the real world. Uh, in the future, most lights will be projectors. Most lights will uh, have 3D knowledge of their environment. Be most lights will be scanners, 3D scanners in real time, 30 frames per second, will have knowledge of 3D environment of their neighbors, will tap into a much better version of Google Earth in real time, will seamlessly work with the traditional AR models through glasses, creating real holograms. So in the future, content creators will become reality creators. Reality as we know it will never be the same, and that's why SAR will change the world. Did I make it? All right. Awesome. <laughs> nice. Uh, fake, fake fire and people jumping off of uh, buildings. That's uh, definitely LA and emergency response. Must love you guys. Um, so so uh, while we open it up for some, for some Q&A uh, for Felipe, I, I will ask that the next presenter um, go ahead and get started there. Thanks, Jeff. Uh, any questions? Uh. So how many projectors and how many lumens does each projector have in order for you to light that? It, 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 it depends on the project, uh, of course. Um, in the case of uh, the, the crumbling of the Monte Carlo, it was six 18K projectors. The fire was one 18K projector. We usually don't go less than 18 to 20K per projector. 
Um, so, but the number of projectors is irrelevant. There was a Russian guy who did 81 projectors two years ago. Uh, usually 18 to 20,000. What's your image density? Image density, you mean resolution? Yes. Uh, well, usually it's HD, by the way. Guys, next year, could we have an HD projector? <laughs> <It'd be laughs> uh, so it's usually 1920 by 1080. We did a f our first 4K project three weeks ago, 3840 by 2160, and we used 418K to blend the image. So uh, our next goal is to use Christie's 4K resolution, 60 frames a second, 72,000 lumens projector, which was introduced at NAB, $500,000. <laughs> we'll rent it. <laughs> Great. And, and so um, thank you. Thank and, you. And, uh,